Right, so today we're going to look at uh, numeric integration and in particular the mid-ordinate rule. Um, so to start us off we're going to look at our traditional integration methods um, which we would have covered before in the previous video. Uh, and what we're going to do is integrate between the limits of 4 and 0 the function of 2 over the square root of x cubed with respect to x. Now, as I've said, we've covered integration before. Whenever we integrate this function between the limits of, of 0 and 4, you get negative 4 over the square root of x. And as I say, we're going between 0 and 4. Uh, in order to find what the, the value is of this uh, integral, we pop the value of the upper limit in to the formula first. So instead of x, I've placed the value of the upper limit. We take away the value of the function when x is at the lower limit, at 0. And here is when the alarm bells should start ringing, because the square root of 0 is equal to 0, and we cannot divide mathematically by 0. So unfortunately, for this instance, because we have this limit of 0, we cannot find what the definite integral is. Now, uh, we have to come up with another method then mathematically in order to solve this. And what we, uh, what we use are numerical integration methods. Uh, and in this case, we're going to show you the mid-ordinate rule. The mid-ordinate rule then is an, is an estimation method. Because it can't be solved uh, analytically, we're going to estimate what the value is. Okay, so we're going between 0 and 4. And what I'm going to draw here is just an arbitrary curve. This is just a shape of a line to demonstrate this a bit better. It's not the shape of the curve of 2 over x, the square root of x cubed. Okay, it's just an arbitrary line to, show, to be able to demonstrate this. So the mid ordinate rule states that an integral between two limits of y with respect to x is equal to an interval width multiplied by the sum of mid ordinates. So this is the rule that we're going to follow. Okay, so there's a couple of values in this, or a couple of terms that we need to identify. First of all, interval width, what does that mean? So the mid-ordinate rule, what we do is we take the, the area that we need to split up, or the area that we need to find under the curve, and we split it up into equal intervals. It's very important that they're equal intervals. So in this case, because I'm going from 0 to 4, I'm going to split this up into uh, four equal intervals, each of uh, distance 1. So there's going to be an interval here, at 1, here at 2, and an interval here at 3. Okay, so these, although it doesn't look like at the scale on the diagram there, this is just a representation. We've split this area up into four equal width intervals. Okay, so there we've got our, what our interval width is. Okay, we split it up into four equal uh, intervals, each of width 1. Okay, 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, and 3 to 4. Next, we need to work out what our mid-ordinates are then. So the mid-ordinate is the value of y at the midpoint of each of the intervals. Okay, so the midpoint of this interval is x is equal to 0.5. So we want to find out what the value of y is at x is equal to 0.5. The midpoint of this interval is 1.5. So we want to find the value of y at 1.5. 2.5 and the value of y at 2.5. 3.5 and the value of y at 3.5. So once we find these four values of y in our case, we add them up and multiply them by the interval width. Effectively what the mid-ordinate rule is, is we're setting up four rectangles here, each of equal width, differing heights. We find the areas of those four rectangles and add them together in our case. So it's, it's an estimation method, it's a crude estimation method, uh, but it's one that works pretty well, and you'll see how in a minute. So we create a table for the values of x 
and the values of y. So in our case, y is equal to 2 over square root of x cubed. So our midpoints of our intervals, as I said, are 1.5, 0.5, 1.5, 2.5, and 3.5. And what we have to find here are the values of y at these associated points. So I've calculated, calculated these already. All you have to do is pop them into your calculator. 5.6586, 1 0 0.0008, 0 0.5059, 0 0.3054. Okay, so those are the values. You pop them into your calculator yourselves and just confirm them that these are the values of y at these mid ordinate points. So we know our interval width is 1, and the next thing we need to multiply by is the sum of the mid ordinates. So if I sum these values of y, add the four values here together, I get 7.5567 when we add them together. So now we can use the mid-ordinate rule. So between the limits of 0 and 4, 2 over the square root of x cubed with respect to x is equal to 1 multiplied by 7.5567, which of course is equal to 7.5567. So using the mid-ordinate rule, I was able to get an area underneath this curve between 0 and 4, which I was, which I was unable to do using analytical integration methods. Now, what's important about the mid-ordinate rule is that the greater the number of intervals that we have, the more accurate our final answer is going to be. So I was quite crude here and used four intervals. If I had have used eight intervals, 16 intervals, or 32 intervals, my answer would be far more accurate here. And you can see that because there's a lot of error in the, in the readings here. You can see there's a bit of the graph that I'm, I'm including here. There's a bit under the graph which I'm not including here. And whenever we squeeze up the intervals and make them uh, the interval width less, we have a more accurate answer. Effectively, the width of our little rectangles are less, so we can get more and closer and closer and closer to the curve. So that's the mid-ordinate rule. You take the area that you want to integrate over, find the integral of, divide it into equal strips, equal intervals, all with the same width. Then at the midpoint of each of these strips, you find the value of y at that associated point, and then use the formula for the mid-ordinate rule, which is our integral width multiplied by the sum of the mid-ordinates. Okay, thanks for listening, guys.